What I've learned about dreams is that it is holy ground. And it was 30 seconds and I'm tears streaming down my face just at the relief yes. of the tangible feeling I had. When I had a look at today's episode being about dreams and visions, my thought went to a very different place really quickly because if I'm honest, I'm more of a creative person, but God's never really spoken to me so much in dreams and visions. But there have been two specific times um, that I had very quick, very simple dreams. Mm -hmm. Both times I was driving in a car. Now, don't ask my parents about my driving skills because I just like to get places quite quickly, honestly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I had two specific dreams in my life. Both of them I was driving a car. Mm -hmm. And the first I had a car crash because I was driving too fast. Mm. And the second dream was during my divorce, um, right after it, just coming back into ministry and starting to um, partner with God to rebuild my life, honestly. Mm -hmm. And I had this specific dream again that I was distracted while driving. And that was the reason I crashed. Now, because a few years earlier, I'd had this dream of driving really fast and crashing. Wow. I found a friend of mine that had done a lot of study into um, dream interpretation and Maybe just be careful on Googling dream yes. interpretations yeah. and stuff right. like that right. because right. there's a lot yeah. of thoughts yes. out there. That's right. my disclaimer. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. But this is a friend of mine that had done this study, um, yeah. done a master's in it, honestly. And he was talking to me about how often driving a car can be like the vehicle of life that we're, we're wow. driving in. And if I was going so fast and I was in a season where I was just going, 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 not mm. resting at all, mm. he's like, it may be a bit of a warning or a wow. caution just to slow down. Wow. Well, because I had known that a few years earlier, this dream happened. And so I knew, okay, let me try to prayerfully pray about this. I talked to some friends and, and it really came up that what I was distracted by was what was in my rear vision mirror. And um, my friend said, hey, Elise, wow. could it be that you're still looking behind you? Um, and if you continue to look at what has happened to you, you're going to come off course on what God has for you. Yeah. Good. So powerful, so simple, and yeah. so layered. Wow. But as I was praying about today, I was like, God, I don't really have other dreams other than that. Like I'm not, again, someone that I haven't had like a ladder to heaven moment. Like I haven't had um, all these other big dreams that people often have. But I felt so clearly, again, the voice of God speak to me just in my heart that was like, Elise, you've had dreams I've given you since you were a little girl. And I was like, yeah, but they're like, I haven't had a sleep and you gave me the dreams. I've just always had those dreams. Mm -hmm. And he said, read the subject of the episode. Mm -hmm. And it said dreams and visions. That's right. And I was like, God, you have given me dreams since I was a little girl. That's right. Since I was a little girl, I don't know how but I just always had this dream of moving to America for ministry. Mm -hmm. Growing up, I really thought everyone loved America as much as I did in Sydney, Australia. I thought everyone knew the American national anthem. Turns out they don't um, in Australia. <laughs> but I had this dream and it was so real. I knew I was moving to America at one point. Oh, wow. I knew that I knew it. I knew it. When you move to America, yeah. I remember being like, oh, cool, she went before me. I'm going to do that too someday. Oh. And it wasn't like because I saw Christine right. do it, I can do it. Mm -hmm. I knew I was going to move to America. Right. It was this dream God had given me. I also had the dream since I was a little girl that I would be in ministry, not just because my parents were. Mm -hmm. I had this dream of building the church, mm -hmm. not my church, the church. Mm -hmm. And having seen the good, bad, and ugly of the church, mm -hmm. I am more in love with her today than I ever have been in my life. That's right. And I had this dream of marriage and doing ministry with my family. Mm. Wow. Mm. I'd seen it done in my family. But even before that, those were the three dreams in my heart. Mm. And so as I was praying about today, and I would love to hear if you guys have had like God dreams or really have had prophetic dreams that God has given you because I want to talk about that. But I also want to talk about this other type of dream that quite often God will give us a dream. And I'm reminded of the story uh, in Genesis of Joseph that God, like he, Joseph has this dream that one day his brothers are going to bow down to him. Mm -hmm. And then he goes through these years right. of, of abuse. He goes through these years of walking through a nightmare okay. after he's had this dream yeah. of what God would do. That's right. And so for someone like me who God has given this dream of marriage and ministry, mm -hmm. two of the three have come to pass. Mm -hmm. And at one stage in my life, I had all three. At one stage, I was doing ministry in America and I was married. So what do we do when God gives us a dream 
and suddenly it feels like we're walking out a nightmare. Did he give us the dream by accident or did he give us the dream as something to hold on to because he knew what we were about to walk through? I think we're in a day and age where we need to demystify the dreams that people can have. Yes. Uh -huh. And we also need to elevate the dreams that God has given us to a place of submitting them and surrendering them to him and also understanding that just because we're walking through a season where we can't see the dream right now doesn't mean that we were given it by accident. Right. In hindsight, it's really easy to see and appreciate the timing of God, no? Except I wish that I had hindsight like today because being in the moment, it's so hard to see the timing of God and how it's going to play out in my life. If it were up to me, my life would be so different. The timing would be so different. I'd have the answers right now. I'd have all the things I'm still waiting for from Him right now. But I think it's so beautiful when I look back on my life, how I see how intentional God is and the kindness of God in the seasons of waiting. I look back on the dreams that I've had and when I see them through God's eyes and on God's calendar rather than mine, 95% of the time, I see exactly why I needed to wait. And the other 5%, I've got the peace that doesn't require clarity anymore. So I think, and I'm reminding myself of this even as I'm saying it, I need to surrender my dreams to God because if history has anything to say, it's that when it comes to his timing, he always knows better than you and I. You know, if, if you don't know the story of Joseph, you can find it in Genesis. Yes. You can read it um, for yourself at home. But, you know, it's interesting in Acts, when Stephen, um, who was a young guy who yeah. eventually is stoned, and he's giving an account of the way God has been with his people through That's everything. Right. Yeah. But when it comes to Joseph, it says this. I always think this is fascinating. And it's Acts 7, verse 9. And it says this. But God was with him and rescued him from all his troubles. Twelve words, and it took 13 years. Wow. And God was with him and rescued him from all his troubles. I think we tend to think, well, if God is with me, A, there won't be troubles, yeah. mm -hmm. and certainly they're not going to last 13 years. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. Um, so to me, that's one of the things that when God puts a dream in your heart, mm -hmm. I think we tend to yeah. think we understand the timing of it. Yes. Woo! But often it's not. I mean, I've learned to live much more open-handedly. Yeah. Like whenever it's God's timing, it'll wow. be there. But in terms of visions, I, the only one I remember really clearly was during the very early days of Women of Faith. And it was kind of at the peak of mm -hmm. popularity. So I remember sitting in an arena, I think it was in Charlotte, North Carolina, and there's 19,000 women. Wow. And I'm sitting on the little, remember we had a little porch where we all porch. sat? And... <laughs> I'm looking around and I feel lost. Wow. I just feel like, Lord, I've got all these women and I just feel like I feel lost in here. I feel like can we, Barry and I were going through some tough things. Um, we were in a season where things were hard mm -hmm. in lots of different areas. And I thought if they all knew right. how lonely right. I feel right oh, at this moment, wow. even though I'm just sitting here and everything looks great. Mm -hmm. And I don't even remember closing my eyes, but I think I must have done because suddenly I'm not in this arena anymore wow. with all these women. It looks like I'm standing in front of this huge door to what looked to me like a Scottish castle. Wow. You know, I had that wow. kind of beautiful old ancient door and I opened the door and I went in and I had this sense I'm supposed to keep walking. Mm -hmm. And there's two doors that have been flung open into this great room. And it's very clear to me that it's Jesus that's sitting wow. on this wow looks like a throne but a big chair mm. and I'm invited to come in and so I go in and I kneel at his feet and I put my head on his lap and I could hear people coming behind me but in that moment I felt Jesus put his hand up and say no no she's just going to be with me just oh. now and it was the most powerful thing of oh. him saying to me she love, there's going to be a lot in the next few years and just yeah. life that's going to be overwhelming. You're not going to understand everything. Mm -hmm. There's times when you're going to feel lost in a crowd. Right. Oh. I just want you to know I'm always here. Yeah. And you can always come in Beautiful. Mm. and you can lay your head down and I'll keep everybody else away. Wow. I just, it was such a profound vision. Yeah. And then, then I'm back in the arena and it's, mm. but I felt something inside me shifted, you know, yeah. this yeah. sense of, 
I, I know it's huge, but I see you. Yes. And I think that for all the women out there who yeah. think nobody sees them yes. and they're going through so much and it's too much yeah. and they can hardly bear it. And just this invitation, come unto me all who are weary mm -hmm. and I will give you rest. Yes. That's so unique. I had a similar experience sitting in wow. Women of Faith wow. on our side where the worship team was. Wow. And I remember having, it was a season of heartbreak. Mm -hmm. And I remember sitting there and actually you were singing, you might have been singing either Greatest Thy Faithfulness or How Great Thou Art. Thou art. Oh. And I just remember sitting there like, it's my job to lead these women to worship. Mm -hmm. And I, I feel like crud, mm -hmm. Lord. Mm -hmm. And I remember in that moment, as you were singing How Great Thou Art, it, two things happened. Um, one was that it was almost as if the Lord stood up in the room. Mm -hmm. And it, it's just words, so it's hard to explain apart from, you know, the scripture where it says, and the train of his rope filled the temple. Yes. It was like, the commotion of God yes. standing up yes. was so awe-inspiring and awesome that it was just mind-blowing because it was like, oh, we are all focused on him. And he just stood up to receive. Mm -hmm. And so it was powerful. But in my heartbreak, I also wow. just wanted him close. And it's like in an instant, he became my chair mm -hmm. and wrapped his arms around me. And I just sat mm -hmm. on him with his arms wrapped around me and he just held me and I just wept like, wow, uh, wow, he's here mm -hmm. and he's wow. with me. Wow. And it was one of the most powerful visions and I'll never forget it, wow. him standing up and then him being my chair. Wow. Like you don't even have to support yourself. Wow. You don't That's even beautiful. have to support yourself. And I'm like, the presence of God is something else, which it's it it wasn't women of faith it's not this it's not it's wherever no, no. you can find the real presence of god yep. get there yeah. because that's where miracles happen i think the difference between knowing god is always with us and those tangible sweet moments with god might be more like i'm married to my husband always right and so i'm always his wife and he's always my husband but date nights are really special because I feel seen and he feels seen. I feel heard and so does he. And so it's a moment of coming together that that has in its essence intentionality and um, desire and concern and love and care. And so even the moment I talked about with women of faith, it's like, yes, the Lord was always with me and I knew it. But when he says in his word that he's near to the brokenhearted, I think that's what he means. Like he comes close and he, it's almost like a season where uh, me and my husband get more date nights than usual. Like it's just special and it's just fun. And it doesn't mean that in those seasons where we don't get as many date nights, that we're not as in love, that we are not as together, but it does mean that those special seasons mean a lot to me. And so, yeah, he's always with us, but those moments of intentionality where you know you're seen and you know you're heard are like none other. I love it that we actually, you guys had similar visions. I think that is so powerful. And different times. I'm and at certain. different times. But I think it's an invitation to anyone watching today because you close your eyes, you think, but you saw a vision, mm -hmm. but we all have a moment. And there's been moments in my life with, even it's funny, as you were saying that, I've had these moments of closing my eyes and just picturing Jesus. Mm -hmm. And these moments, I don't even remember who told me, honestly, but of picturing myself climbing onto the Father's lap and just sitting there. And it has been in those moments, in the most heartbreaking That's moments real. of my life, yep. of just sitting and leaning back. Yep. And I was recently at a retreat where a friend of mine, Brooke, reminded me of that, of just lean back into him. Close your eyes and imagine leaning back. And it was 30 seconds and I'm tears streaming down my face just at the relief. Yes of the tangible feeling I had of doing that. Maybe you don't fall asleep and dream, but you can close your eyes and picture Jesus and see what happens. God wants us to do life together because we are better together. Connect with us on social media and join a community that encourages and prays for one another. We can't wait for you to join us.
I have in instances where I would something would come up in counseling or some kind of abuse would come up and I would ask the question, Lord, where were you? Yeah. Yeah. And I'm, I'm going to sit here and I'm going to close my eyes and I'm going to let you show me yep. Whoa. Yep. where you were. 100% of the time, he's there with me and yep. he's heartbroken. But what that does is, one, it activates my faith. So I'm reminded that when he says he's never going to leave or forsake me, that's true now yes. and it's always been true. Yes. But also it reframes terrible memories. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it puts God in the center of it yeah. so that it's like all of a sudden there is no big bad wolf mm -hmm. that is as big and bad as my God. You know wow. what I'm saying? And yeah. so it kind of reframes even abuse. Now, I'm not saying do that in lieu of talking things out and getting the help that people need. But I am saying that, like you said, try it and see. Mm -hmm. Like, you may not be able to go to sleep and dream and maybe you don't get into REM sleep. That's a whole thing, <laughs> right? But you can close your eyes and say, where are you now, Lord? Or yeah, can I be see. with you now? Yeah. Or where were you then? Yeah. And can we deal with some things yes. in your present? Mm -hmm. Oftentimes what happens when God speaks to us through dreams and visions, it helps us to reframe a very painful moment that then by reframing that moment, it doesn't change the moment, but it changes our perspective of that moment so we can find Jesus in that moment and Jesus Himself can bring the healing that we are so desperate for because we see Him. I have had a different time when, you know, there was a, I was having some inner healing done when it came to the area of abuse. And there was this one particular incident that had so deeply damaged me. And in that, I was able to reframe. It didn't change what happened in that moment, but then what I was able to do is see Jesus in that moment. And I will never forget the most graphic uh, picture I had of Jesus. I could see Him sobbing sobbing about what was happening to me. I cannot explain to you what happened in an instant in terms of healing. So where I thought God had abandoned me and yet I saw God weeping for me, it changed everything about that scenario that happened to me. I mean, I think it's pretty wild throughout scripture. There, there are a lot of like dreams in the night. Yeah. It's yes. all over the place. Yes. You're like, and I, I think I actually do. I feel like when I've been at big impasses or big like decision making or the Lord's trying to get my attention, my dreams start increasing in the yeah. night, which is really interesting. Wow. And I think a lot of this, it was such a gentle way in, cause I can naturally doubt myself. I can mm -hmm. doubt, am I hearing from the Lord? Am I making that up? And I, I have a, an issue sometimes with mistrust of myself. And I think really beautifully and graciously, the mm. Lord's like, you know what? I'm gonna have you yeah. sleep. And here, <laughs> so I'm gonna good. speak you're to you in a way, this. yeah, where you're not, That's you right. don't have to get involved in a place where you're gonna disqualify yourself. This is just in a sacred space. That's in so sleep. good. As you rest, yeah. I speak to you. This is fully on me. And and the thing that's so cool about dreams, they're always like, they're hilarious. He's like, how did I get here? <laughs> yes. I move from this and that. And it's <laughs> so, right. it's intrinsically playful. That's right, that's so the right. The high stakes of like getting it right and this is yeah. literal and whatever, it just kind of brings you into like an, an alternative <laughs> world. That. Mm -hmm. that for me was actually a very peaceful, joyful place of getting to hear from the Lord. And yeah. so I would wake up and it just felt like he really slowly kind of began to train me. Now I've heard this and I can tell you like time and time again in my life, just the last month I've started writing my dreams down again and there's wow. a wow. try it. It's it's wild. Wow. Yeah. You start writing your dreams, it's stewardship, you'll start having more. I am telling you really? like, Ooh, I like that. just a couple days ago, so I, I, I went back and I was reading some dreams. Last night, super vivid dream wow. relating to to where we're headed, like like clockwork. I know, which just sounds so wow. crazy, wow. but it's like, it's actually a stewardship factor of just like, oh, God, I'm I listening. So, and then like, for me, I'll kind of pay attention to the tone of the dream because sometimes it's yep. what, or yeah. like the colors, or That's sometimes there's yeah. people and they signify who they are to me, or sometimes I just know their names. Yeah. Well, then I'll go look. Like there was one that I had uh, where I was, I was kind of at a decision point and I had this dream where I was at a hotel and I had to get somewhere and I forgot something back there. And there was a guy who offered to bring me what I forgot so that I could get wherever I was going in time. And there were a couple other people and I didn't know who they were. Some I did, but I looked up what the name meaning was and every single name hmm. meant grace. Wow. So what I thought I forgot, 
Grace brought to me, where I thought I was going to be late. Grace delivered. So it's like, it actually can be so fun where you're like, it's It's this whole treasure hunt. Absolutely. And I think that's what's so beautiful to me, how gracious it's been with the Lord of just some of my strongest warnings or like conviction has come through dreams where it's recurring kind of everything will be the same in the dream, but one little thing changes. Yeah. Learning some of these kind of loose interpretations and then bringing them to the Lord. I have had some of like the most radical decisions of my life really being dictated by dreams. And the Lord's been so gracious to meet me in it. It is a skill that we grow in. It's it's a muscle to build. Um, Dream interpretation, having dreams, all of that. To me, I'm gonna always fundamentally bring it back down to you. Does it line, align with the character and nature of God? Is it, does it stand firm in scripture, right? Um, but I think the language of dreams, what different things can symbolize or mean, a lot of times it's finding resources that are trustworthy, right? Whether that's people where they just kind of have a natural gifting or interest in dreams, talking about them. I have people in my life where I'll ask, hey, I have this dream and it feels important. It feels like there's weight to it. It doesn't just feel like, you know, a dream because I had pizza last night or whatever. What do you think? And I'm actually submitting it and not only just getting the interpretation, but I want to ask, I want to be a student or a learner. How did you get there? How did you know that that meant that? Um, Because I really want to steward that as a muscle, as a gift. Um, And so for me, I, I find resources and people that are really trustworthy and dive in. I've just been really hungry to learn and let my curiosity lead me places. If you're curious about it or I if you're like, it. I have this recurring one or whatever, I would say start with writing them down and yeah. trust that the Lord will meet you. Yes. It's all over in the book. It, it is. is. all it's over in here. Examples of it. Absolutely. Jacob and the dream of the ladder and uh, yeah. the dream to Joseph to confirm that like you can take Mary as your wife. Like this yeah. is of me. She's not just like making a crazy story up. There are so many examples of dreams. And I like what you said about it's being playful and it being yeah. this realm where especially if you're an overthinker or like a I don't want to get this wrong or what about this a dream is simply like waking up and remembering it Mm -hmm. and being like oh that was in the dream I think it's it's kind of cool Chris have you ever had no I'm like I'm like laughing because I'm just thinking it's I'm so bizarre in that and for anyone watching this that goes man I so don't relate um (laughs) today you and I are in the same vibe and I've asked the Lord I go what is it because I want anything Mm -hmm. God's giving I want, like I'm, yeah. I'm all in, but I'm thinking throughout my life, is it a response to trauma? Mm. Is it what that has made me not um, be a big dream? Now, I've, mm. in terms of, I had a couple of seasons of inner healing prayer mm. um, yeah. and both of those times, one was like that, like, where is Jesus in this yeah. moment? And one was a, a very graphic wow. moment of abuse and it reframed a wow. lot, seeing Jesus yes. weeping yeah. and, um, Another time was just before I got married, after I had told Nick a whole lot of all my past, all that sort of stuff. And then I had gone to a charismatic Catholic nun who was 84 in a monastery in Sydney. Mm -hmm. Didn't know, hadn't probably been out of the monastery since she was 16. So didn't know me from Adam. And I'm in a stone floor uh, at the bottom of the monastery, Mm. a chair that was just like a regular just chair. You know, there was Jesus sort of still on the cross there and Mary, I just waved, she was there. And so that was it. That was all that was in the room. So, and I'm from a Greek Orthodox background, so this is all very familiar to me, you know, but there's nothing. It's a stone room, one straight, stark chair, an 80-something-year-old charismatic Catholic nun and two kind of like uh, things up on the wall. That's it. And so we have this moment. It's having a moment of going back um, into the womb. And so this is, um, so I married Nick still three years before I I know I'm adopted. So I don't know at this point. I'm just like, um, and in this moment, she goes, where are you? And uh, why I, this is vivid to me is because I wrote it in my prayer journal. Mm -hmm. I wrote, uh, and I remember saying then I was weeping and I said, there's no umbilical cord. I'm not connected. I'm not supposed to be here. Those phrases. And that's written. There's no umbilical cord. And what I saw was me almost as an embryo, really like, um, 
in the hand of what I believe to be the hand of God holding me alive. And it was holding, that was holding me in my mother's womb. Okay. So then we fast forward three years. I'm having dinner with um, Lois Burkett, a prophet in Australia who came to do something with the Assemblies of God, the denomination I was part of. Over dinner, she says to me, Christine, you know, um, how's your relationship with your mother? Now, mm. she's the kind of person that, you know, when they're asking you, you're like yeah, yeah, yeah. replaying, what are the conversations? Have I done? What have I done? She's about to read my mail, you know, yeah. like what? And I, you know, I had had a really challenging relationship with my mum growing up. Again, at this point, I still don't know I'm adopted. And I said to her, you know, I was kind of, I go, I think everything's really good now. You know, we have had a lot of challenges, but it's been really good. And she goes, I don't, you know, she goes, no, 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 no problem. I was just wondering. She said, because every time I pray for you, Christine, I pray and she goes, it's like um, when I pray about you, you're like Elijah the Tishbite. She said, every other prophet in the Bible, there's an entire genealogy about where they're from. She wow. goes, but there's only one prophet. There's no genealogy. It just starts oh, in wow. um, First Kings or wherever, 17, it says, and she goes, it just says, now Elijah the Tishbite. That's where he begins. He comes in. She goes, wow. every time I pray for you, wow. it's just like there's no gene. It just says now Elijah the Tishba. It's just like Christine. Oh. And I said to her, okay, you know how weird that is? About three years ago, I was having some inner healing. I had this mm -hmm. thing and I wrote this no umbilical cord. I'm not connected. I'm not supposed to be here. Oh. I said, I wonder if God just wants me to deal with things with my mum more. Wow. <laughs> Seven days later. Seven days? Oh, my I'm God. driving to... My mum's house where my brother just said, and I called my best friend. I went, do you think I'm about to find out? I said, do you think that word? All I'm saying is I'm with a charismatic Catholic nun. You can't make this stuff up. No, no, no. Like whoever's no. watching this now, like, you know, whatever. But, but it's like, and all of that together. So no, I want more dreams and visions. I'm like, I don't know what happens. I pass out when I go to bed. I don't recollect. I'm sure I do. People say you do. I just don't. But um, that one was so dramatically wow. linked to my life. So, you, you know, where do you make mm. that up? God had been preparing me through this uh, vision initially. There's no umbilical cord. I'm not connected. I'm not supposed to be here. Christine, this is like there's no genealogy. It's just like Elijah the Tishbite. And then a week later, Christine, you were adopted. The grace, the mercy and the love of God prepared me for what I was about to find out. So instead of me then spiraling out, I knew that the hand of God, the love of God, the grace of God was holding me together right from my mother's womb. And then of course from scripture, so this is not all weird. Before I formed you in the womb, the Lord says, I knew you. I knew you before you got in there. I formed you in there and you saw a picture of my hand forming you and keeping you alive. So don't be shattered by the fact that you don't know your genealogy. You don't know who your biological mother is. You don't know who your biological father is. I formed you. I held you. I anointed you. I appointed you. You'll be fine. You can ask God to yeah. give you mm -hmm. dreams. Yes. That's something I've started and I'm actually going to do what you do. I'm no, going to start writing them down. I think I love the idea of it being stewardship mm. of, you know, if God gives you something, you steward it well. I mean, that's a scriptural principle. If you use it well, he will give you more. Mm -hmm. So I think that's, a good, I'm going to start praying for oh, that, yeah. that God would speak to me in dreams, because I just think anyway, it's like you say, if God's giving it, you want it. Yes. Yes. Any way that God's going to communicate, mm -hmm. I'm all in. Yeah. Yep. That's definitely something that I'm going to start doing as well now. Some of the dreams I've written down before have been as crazy as like, and then I was a superhero and now yeah. I'm really? in a thing of, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. some of my dreams, in but I like how you, again, how you said it was playful. Yeah. It is this kind of world of like getting into this like. World of whimsy. For sure. Yeah, yes. whimsical <laughs> yeah. way of God getting your attention in the same way. I think that kids learn in different ways, yes. whether some of them are visual learners or yes. writing down or tactile. Yep. God knows That's right. us. Yes. That's right. And so I do think there is something about some people that are like, oh yeah, God constantly speaks to me in dreams. Mm. And then others that are like, I'm also here, hear yes. God, or I yep. yeah. like mine comes through doing or experiences, or I see images. Like I see right. analogies. Yes. God speaks to me through analogies all the time. Yeah. That's right. Like all the time, truly. Yeah. Like every, I feel like, at first I thought it was just like growing up as my dad's daughter and he was just like the sermon illustration yeah. master. And so I thought I saw sermon illustrations everywhere, but it's how God speaks to me. Yes. And yet at the same time, I want God to speak to me through dreams as well. So mm -hmm. I think um, some people are probably more prone to a way yeah. of hearing from God in the same yes. way that some children are more prone to learning yes. through different ways. And the God that created all of it knows us mm -hmm. and it's how he gets 
um, our attention. And so I think that uh, for me, even just like praying about this and looking into scripture and seeing how many examples it is, isn't it just all a way for our creator to get our attention and yes. to want, finding ways to connect with us? I am kind of learning um, the whole area of God-given dreams. To be honest with you, I've never really asked the Lord to give me a dream. I've had a couple, but I've never asked. But um, one of the things this week and better together that I've kind of learned is that if you read all the way through scripture, God gives dreams to people. So I'm starting now where I'm going to ask the Lord, Lord, if it's something you would like, if it's something you think would teach me more about you, if it's something that would heal something, if it's something that made me grow, then then Lord, please give me a dream. And, and if he does, then I'm going to write them down and ask the Holy Spirit, what does this mean? Because the whole point of everything is to become more like Jesus. It's not to have spiritual experiences. It's not to go from one high to the next high. The whole point, in fact, Jesus said that the point of his life was to glorify the Father. So anything that the Lord gives us that would glorify the Father, then I want to say I am all in. I was about to say, because I don't actually enjoy a world of whimsy. And it's based on my childhood trauma. Oh, okay. It's like, I would like a stable place yeah. oh. where things I are know predictable. what's happening. Wow. Yeah. You and I, that's not a yeah, fun place. Totally. It's like, yeah. people like Alice in Wonderland, not me. Okay. Yeah. It's like, I need a yeah. floor. I need things to be right yeah. side up. Yeah. And it's yeah. because of childhood trauma. Yeah. So mm -hmm. oh. a world of whimsy and dreams where things change in an instant mm -hmm. is actually not safe for me. Wow. And so I haven't had so yeah. many. Yeah of those experiences because yeah. the Lord is like, I'm going to speak to you awake, girl. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. uh -huh. that's, that's that way you know that I'm safe and that yeah. I'm coming to say something to you. Yes. But you're absolutely right. It's, it's based on how we can hear it too and our personalities and the things that we've gone through. Yeah. I think there's, you know, you hear also that kids growing up sometimes have very, so for me, I had very vivid night terrors growing up, mm. like nightmares, all that. And what can actually happen is if you've had negative experiences in sleep, in dreams, you can kind of inadvertently be like, I don't want to dream and kind That's of right. shut that down. That's you can right. kind of like stop that spout from, from right. going, you know, yeah. and actually like, what does it look like to be like, God, would you turn that back on mm. and would your voice yeah. come and speak? You you know, and it actually, yeah. in a beautiful way, yeah. can heal some of these That's places. Right. I've also heard, wow. you know, people who've engaged in, you know, whether it's what they viewed with their eyes or whatever, their imagination right. has been shut down that's right. because it's been a place of destruction. It's that's been a place right. that's hurt them, whatever. So sometimes dreams can also be a bit more restricted. Now, I'm not saying that's why. Some people just dream yeah. more than others, yeah. you know. Yeah. But yeah. there no. are these places where it's like, Actually, there there can be healing in some of those areas, invitations for the Lord to come and speak, reawaken some of those. Right. Again, I'm not saying that if oh, you don't yeah. dream, there's anything behind that. But um, I think for me, I really didn't, I, I really kind of stopped it because it was so scary yeah. for me. Yeah. Um, and then in the opening that back up, it really has kind of become this like sacred ground to the point where if I have a nightmare, I know this is not him because this is not our language. This is not our safe place, you know? So every time we lie down to sleep, we're at the mercy of the Lord. We're entrusted to Him, right? He watches over us as we slumber. There's so many different, specifically in the Psalms, verses about God covering us in our sleep. So sometimes a nightmare will come through, and especially when we're young, it's so scary that we can say, I don't want to experience that again. I don't want to, I don't want to dream like that again. And we end up accidentally kind of shutting that down sometimes. I think to me, it's just a matter of going back to the Lord and saying, I trust you in my sleep. You are my keeper. You watch over me while I sleep. Um, and if there's anything that I've shut down, I trust you more than I'm afraid of a, of a night mirror or a night ter terror that would come along. You have only proven yourself faithful as I rest, as I sleep. And I just ask him to reawaken, to reopen. If there's something that maybe I've shut down out of fear, ask him, God, I, I know all throughout scripture, you speak to your people through dreams. And if out of fear, that's something that I have shut down, I just invite you to come reopen and to be my protector in that delicate, fragile space in sleep. I trust you to watch over me as I rest, to keep me safe to keep me from harm and i trust that the dreams that you have for me are good and i want to receive them again 
I remember my little one, Sophia, was, she was not even three yet and she's in the back of the car. We're driving out of our house. She goes, Mummy, why does God give us imagination? Mm -hmm. I just remember that. Wow, like, that's a big I'm question. I'm telling you, before yep. she, she wasn't even three yet because I remember saying to myself, pay attention now, Christine, this is right. a moment. Yes. Like you just, I just yes. knew. And I go, honey, tell me. And I thought... Even compared to my eld my oldest or even me, she's just wired up. She's going to go to Paris for mm. screenwriting. Yeah. She's a feel, she sees. Very creative. Yeah. So I do think, I want people watching this to know that there is a degree that I think God wires yeah. us yes, all up right. so differently because yeah. yep. I've watched her all her life and I thought you... You have some. And now, I would say I'm creative too. I write to write the sermons yes. I write, to yeah. start yes. A21, to do Propel. Yes. It's a different, it's a different creativity and it's a different way that mm -hmm. um, the Lord does it. But I do think he's spoken to her since she was yeah. a toddler through dreams. So I'm thinking wow. there also must be. Yeah. yeah. So even when Daniel came in to interpret the dreams, yeah. not, not everybody in Scripture interpreted every dream. Yeah. Not everybody, not everyone was Joseph that I dreamed a dream. So like everything, we've got to be open that yeah. there are different yeah. ways. What what we I want us to do though is to ensure that we're encouraging Christians to not shut that down because yes. we have a world that is desperate. So yes. there's a whole industry of the dream industry, yes. isn't there? There's That's a whole, right. That's so right. like the same with Simon the Sorcerer uh -huh. and the same with Daniel and yep. then the magicians of the day and th there's yeah. always a counterfeit. Yeah. That's right. But if we don't step into that space, all there will be is the counterfeits. I love that we're talking about dreams and visions this week when we're talking about hearing from God. I think it was Callie that mentioned it, that often what can happen with dreams is that we're not so cluttered with our own thoughts and our own perceptions on how we think our life can go. And so what God can do through, through dreams while we're asleep is He can speak to us in a really special way. The times that God has spoken to me through visions and the few times that God has spoken to me through dreams, it's given me a bit of an ease at knowing that I heard from God because I couldn't have made it up if I tried. Like I was asleep. So I think the beauty in God speaking to us in that way is that it doesn't get as cluttered with our human experiences and opinions. I'm so grateful that in His grace, there are some times where He puts us in a state of rest to speak to us a little more clearly. My dad uh, would tell me stories about when he would go to Indonesia and go into these mosques and like people uh, that would be in the mosques worshiping um, and were Muslim faith. And one of their evangelism tools was to ask people, hey, have you had a dream of the man in white? <laughs> And um, they would stay after they met Jesus. They would stay as their mission field and just go and ask people, have you seen the man in white in a dream? And if they hadn't, no worries, that's fine. But more times than not, yeah. someone would say, yes, who is that? Wow. And I'm they would be able to totally. introduce people to wow. Jesus yep. and say, I know who that man is. Wow. And so you just can't tell me that God doesn't speak no, no. through me. dreams mm. and, yeah. and, and that we just maybe don't have as much of it because we have so much access to it. Right. We so stimulate our, sense, that's our that's right. senses and, and and that fasting. And I talk to my kids about this, that, you know, the disconnection yeah. allows a connection yeah, at a whole right. different yeah. level. I think Your that is so are powerful. Yeah. And that's is so like powerful. the, um, I, oh, I love what you said about the imagination thing too, because I remember back just then of uh, being a kid and we'd play in, in the pool in summer and like play mermaids. Mm -hmm. And right. um, mm -hmm. I'm watching these two little girls right now uh, recently in my world grow up and their immediate thing is imagination. Yes. They want to play schools. They want to yes. play mermaids. Yes. They want to play. And, and somewhere along the way, the yeah. imaginary, like Im imaginary zoo that we had where our brother played the part of a monkey or yeah. a, yeah. a fish or whatever. Yes. And then the imaginary mermaids that changed into us using our imagination to pretend everything was fine. And somewhere along the way, maybe we grew up and the game changed, but we didn't stop playing the game. We just started putting our creative energy into more of a, here's how I'm presenting in life rather than using it to play. Mm -hmm. And I know I've done that so much mm -hmm. in my life. And it's like, the more I'm like, God, can you bring me back to that childlike imagination? Yeah. I even wonder, like I'm challenged in this conversation that I'm like, tonight, I'm like, I want a dream. Totally, I'm, I'm, I'm going to ask again. I'm, yeah. Yes, I'm asking ask again. Yeah. Start writing it down. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. 
I think our imagination is one of the most beautiful gifts that God has given us. I mean, if you think about it, He created the world out of nothing. That is so much creativity. That is so much imagination. And He gave us imagination. So I think when we cultivate that and we steward the gift of imagination, it's one of the most powerful things that we can do, especially in seasons when we're wondering what God's saying or, or we're trying to hear Him clearer. I have used my imagination so much in my connection time with God. And as I cultivate the gift that He's given me of my imagination, it helps me become more childlike. It somehow shakes off the expectations that our world and culture has put on us to be serious and polished and professional like all the time. Sometimes I think we're like too adult. No, especially when it comes to faith. We're too sensible. When if you think about it, isn't faith like speaking out what we can't see yet? So by using our imagination, we're acting in faith. By becoming more childlike, somehow we're becoming more like Him. One of the dreams that I had that was so significant, it was when I was dealing with shame. Um, that had come up as an issue in my life, I don't know, maybe 10 years ago. And I was really trying to get to the, the root of it. And I remembered this moment when I'm 12 years old. In Scotland, you go to primary school from five to 12, and then you go to secondary school from 12, 13 mm -hmm. through to college. So at 12, when you're graduating from primary school, you feel like you're, you're the big kids, you know, you're the yes. oldest in the school, you feel so sophisticated. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a school dance. And the fashion that year was very much these little straight dresses, you know, straight, short, kind of mini dresses. And I didn't have that. And I knew that my mom couldn't afford it because she was very in a limited budget. So I decided I just wouldn't go to the school dance. Mm. But I came home from school one day. My mom said, I got you a dress. Aww. And I was like, oh, my gosh. Aww. So I ran upstairs and there it was my bed. And it was just the worst dress imaginable. Oh, oh. It was blue and it had little flowers on oh, it. And it was all layers and a big bow at the back. <laughs> my mom okay. had, you know, done so much to get it. And so I was like, oh. mom, I love it. So on the night no. of the dance, oh. I put the dress on. No, I didn't go to the dance, though. I hid behind the school. I walked to where the school was because it was just off our road. This is heartbreaking. You know, this is good heartbreaking. news. This is good news. And, oh my. and I, I just kind of hid, and I saw all my friends going in, and they all had the right dress on. And I knew I'd made the right decision, but I remember feeling so lonely. Yes. And then went home and told my mom I'd had a great time. And oh, everything. my gosh. So in this dream, like 10 years ago, suddenly I'm in this huge... Wow huge field and I see Jesus. I mean, I know it's him. He's in this yeah. white. And I look down and I realized by my shoes, I'm not the age I am because I've got these little shoes oh, on yeah. and I've got that dress on. And I'm like, oh my gosh. And I walk right up to Jesus and he takes my hands and he swings me round oh. and round oh. and round. And it was just this like, you know what? Hey, you are not alone in that field. No. I was right there with you, oh and I word. thought you looked beautiful. Oh. And I just think that's one of the gifts that <laughs> the Lord did. <laughs> <laughs> it goes back into those painful moments, you know, yes. and lets us know, no, I was there, and you looked lovely. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Beautiful. Like, there are so many people that need to hear that. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Like, yeah. there are so many people that need things reframed yeah. and need yeah. to even begin to imagine yes. that they have a God who cares about those moments. Those moments. Absolutely and yes. who will meet them in that moment again. Yes. One of the things that I absolutely treasure in my life are the times where I feel like the Lord has either given me a vision or, 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 or a dream. And you might be tempted to say, well, if you have the Word of God, why, why would you need that? And I think it's just because God cared, cares for us so much. It's such a deep, personal, intimate way. Sometimes it's simply like for me, when I used to share the story of, um, I call it shame and the blue dress, a dress that I wore that I knew was just wrong and made me feel terrible. And then I had this vision of, of meeting Jesus in, in a field and him holding me by the hands and swinging me around. And we were both laughing. 
And what I felt that was about, it was about healing, because I always felt like that was such a shame-filled moment. But after I had that, that vision, it was as if the Lord saying, Sheila, you weren't alone in the field that night. I was right there with you. And so that for me brought some healing. Um, I've shared other times where, I mean, and I haven't had tons of these, but I shared a time where it was as if, even though I was in an arena full of people, there was this moment where I felt the Lord just closed me in with Himself. And it was to speak words of encouragement to my heart. I think that's the point, that's the whole purpose, that the Lord wants to let you know you're not alone, I was there, all those key moments in your life where you think, where were you, Lord? Sometimes the Lord might give you a vision or a dream to say, you are not alone. I was there. And somehow it simply, it reframes, reframes the moment where the enemy would say, you know, you were all alone and where was God? And I think it's just the way the Lord says, I was there. You were not alone. I had these recurring dreams um, that I was pregnant and it yeah. literally, I would dream and I would track and I was getting more and more pregnant yeah. when I would go to sleep and have the next dream wow. and the baby came out singing. And this was in this whole season where I was like, I'm done worship leading. I don't want to do it. That's not the call in my life, whatever. And then I give birth to this baby that's singing and it's this whole wow, journey and wow. for me it was tracking what he's doing and I'm I am growing something and developing something inside of you and wow. it's coming to fruition wow. where it's like even I love that it frames a God who would be found in those way a God who would be yes. who would remember that dress yes who would yes. go back in that dream and say oh, I was word. with you because he's gonna he's gonna give you smaller shoes that's so right that you know that it was a different time that's right a right. God who would speak through shape and color and names and story like totally, I just yes. to me that that intrigue like yeah. where I can where I can be like oh he's just a, a far off God it's like it's sterile it's like no he is no. he's here in the details and he's yes. in the details yeah. of this dream, the way that I felt in it, that I just love what it says about him, yes. that he would be found in those yes. places and in those ways. And, and I think for me, I know Havilah Cunnington is amazing. She has resources on hearing the voice of God, but she talks about how we hear, how we see, we yeah. know, and we feel. And so I think sometimes like we can be like, I don't hear the voice of God because I didn't hear an audible voice. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you may feel <laughs> things walking yeah. into different environments yeah. and he can be found that you may yes. just know something. They say, they say you know yeah. in your knower. You know, yes. this is yes. deep you know sense, knower. right? Yes. And then I think these are very visual. The, yeah. the, um, very. the visions and the dreams, yeah. like you can you can see and just that he would be found in all yeah. of those totally. multifaceted ways. Yes, I think you just so beautifully said that. Mm -hmm. It's just another way that God speaks. Mm -hmm. And that's all this week is, is to... Uh, get us all curious yeah. as to, God, I haven't really seen or heard or felt in that way. Can you speak to me like that? Yeah. Yeah. Can you show up here mm -hmm. in the way that he would heal and encourage and comfort in a dream and that he was holding on to that moment mm -hmm. yeah. for the perfect moment yes. yeah. to say, I thought you looked lovely. Mm. Even the way God speaks to us. Mm. For so long, I, I thought that God spoke in a really professional voice. Yes. <laughs> until I realized my own dad is the least professional voiced human mm. in the world. And I actually hear God calling me baby and babe a lot more than he says, hello there, thy daughter. <laughs> like, God speaks to us in the way that we find safety in. Mm. And I'm going to pray um, I want to pray that we have dreams. Yeah, yes. I want to pray that totally. everyone at home that has been as curious as I think we all have been in this episode and this conversation, that God would show up and speak. And so, mm. good pray. Yes. Yeah, Jesus, I thank you. I thank you for this whole week of conversations. Lord, I just, I do, I feel like you're smiling and you're pleased with the conversations we're having. Like you're looking at your kids who are who are talking about their dad and the different uh, things that, that we've done with you and the ways we've experienced you. And, and God, isn't this just like you? 
that you would make us more curious and lean into how you want to speak to us. So God, I just pray, first of all, for anyone right now that's having negative experiences in their dreams and visions. God, we just come against that. God, I pray protection over our sleep, a protection over our rest, a protection over our minds and our imaginations and where the enemy has tried to take that. God, we take that back in your name. God, you created our imagination and you created it for your good. So I pray, Lord, I pray in this next week that we'd have dreams. Lord, that we'd have dreams created and planned by you that would bring us closer to you and that we would wake up being more in love with you than we went to sleep. And God, I just thank you so much that in every way we experience you, whether it is through the scriptures or through conversations with friends like we've been having this week or through dreams, Lord, I pray that every single moment with you would draw us closer to you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, Lord. Amen. Amen. Dreams have been a constant for me and God. There was so much training ground that he's used with dreams. I've had dreams where I've met the Lord. I've had dreams where things have been explained to me. I've had dreams with my life. I've had all kinds of dreams. Dreams that I'm aware that I'm in a dream and I'm being taught in a dream. I've I had dreams that. that the Lord would tell me what he wants me to teach, <laughs> you know, on a, on a service. Um, and he would, he would teach me the word in the dream and I would wake up and I'm like, oh my gosh, let me go back to that scripture. So what I've learned learned about dreams is that it is holy ground. Um, but similar to Moses, when Moses encountered God in the burning bush, there was an awakening that Moses, that where you're standing is holy ground, take off your shoes. It had to come to him that you might think this is just a regular place, but this is holy ground. And when we begin to understand that dreams are holy ground, we approach it differently. We approach going to bed differently. And I think that dreams are so critical to the life of every believer because similar, you know, the Apostle Paul, we've been talking about prophecy, right? The Apostle Paul says that above all, desire that you should prophesy. Amen. But when you think about the natural life, you know, researchers will tell you that the average person sleeps for 26 years of their life. Wow. 26 years of your life, you're sleeping. God is so into us that he doesn't want that to be wasted space. Mm, that while you're sleeping, that I can download revelation, prophetic Absolutely. direction, yes. and insight about your life. And so even when we look at Moses again, you know, when the Lord will say things like, if there is a prophet among you, I will speak to them through dreams and visions. But Moses, my servant, I speak to face to face. We ignore what God just said. If there is a prophet among you, that I release prophecy mm -hmm. through dreams and visions. Mm -hmm. So there was a huge part that he was trying to highlight right there. And so with dreams, it's powerful, but we have to engage it properly. Mm -hmm. And how do we do that? It's practical, right? When you're going to bed, have a moment, to, yes. even in your yes. prayer, yes. Lord, as I'm yes. going to bed, speak to me about my day. Because one mm -hmm. of the things I learned in Genesis, the night started the day. Yep. When it would say that and a new oh, day was so created, good. it would say there was evening and there was day. Right. So the nighttime starts your day. So when you're dreaming, when you're in your sleep state, you go to bed and you have an expectation that God, as I go to bed, I know I was just watching something on television, but don't let that influence this space. Right. Lord, I'm giving you my dream. I'm surrendering so that good. to you. And expectation looks like works. It means yeah. that you may have a journal yep. Yep. by your bedside. Yes. It means that when you wake up, you're not quick to be distracted and let what you received in your spirit leave you but you're quick to seek the face of God and all of a sudden that's why randomly throughout the day we're like oh my gosh I had a dream yeah, yeah. <laughs> that you had hours ago but something was able to awaken you to like oh my and this dream was so critical for my life yeah so fascinating that's so good I feel like in my walk with the Lord, I've not had all dreams or visions. That wasn't something I was at least aware of. And so in this last season, I've just been so desperately seeking him. I'm like, Lord, I know that dreams are biblical and visions are biblical. So I asked him, I was like, give me a dream or a vision. Well, right around the time that I was making this hard decision last fall, like we were talking about, 
I had a vision. I was, so I was awake, but it was yeah. like I was awake and I was conscious, but it was like it appeared before me. And I was walking through this tunnel and the tunnel was really closed in and really dark and just kind of scary. You know what I mean? Like you couldn't see your, your right or your left or what was around. But it wasn't super long. It was kind of like medium length. And Jesus was with me. I was not alone. He was walking with me. And as we got through the tunnel, which was scary and unknown and I couldn't really see much, it just opens up and it's bright white. And you could just see forever. And the thing that I felt like the Lord was affirming in me at that moment was, you know, there's been a pattern where, especially years ago, where the Lord would ask me to do something and I would obey. And I would expect that I was going to get a standing ovation for my obedience. I was going to get an applause, maybe a parade in my honor, matching t-shirts, like, well done, Christy, you obey. No, typically the yeah. obedience leads me right into the wilderness. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, what? But I, but aren't you proud of me? Like, don't I get a pat on the back? You almost start to doubt because when he leads you into the wilderness because he's doing something in you, preparation, and this is, again is biblical, it can make you doubt that I make the wrong decision because yeah. it got hard. You obeyed and it got hard. Mm-hmm. And I just felt like that vision from the Lord was... Yes, you remember that it's gotten hard before when you obeyed and it will get hard again, but don't let that make you doubt. You are not alone. And just because you can't see doesn't mean I don't know where we're going. And so I just, I think a lot of times God can give us visions or dreams, like you said, to reveal something, but also to just confirm something. You could ask, say, Lord, give me a dream to confirm this. I'm sensing this, but I'm not sure. Would you give me a dream to confirm this? And I love how you said that about how much we sleep like that. That's an opportunity for him to speak to us and download things to us that, you know, he doesn't want to waste that time. It's such a good perspective. Yeah, and I love what you said about dreams, you know, sometimes leading you into a season of adversity or difficulty. We see that with Joseph. He gets these unbelievable dreams about his future and his destiny and he starts talking and it lands him in a pit (laughs) and in a prison. I mean, talk about delay. We talked about delay and waiting. I mean, he's your man. Um, But then we see the fulfillment of the dream. And I've had that in my own life where God gave me a dream. He gave me a dream about one of our children before I was even pregnant with our second child. I had a, a dream and I really believed. I heard God say, you're going to have a son and you're to name him Noah Luca, but he'll be known as Luca, a bringer of light. I look wow. up Luca, it means a bringer of light. I'm wow. not pregnant. I'm like, Matt, we need to have a chat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel pregnant. Yeah. I um, end up early delivery mm-hmm. and my son is whisked away. It's a terribly scary situation. Matt's like, look out of the window, massive rainbow. And I'm thanking God. No matter what's happening right now, God spoke to me before he was born. This is a season of adversity right now. I don't know what's happening, but there's a rainbow. God's saying, I spoke to you about his name. I spoke to you about his life. Trust me for the promise. Mm. And I have so many times just literally just said his name. I say, Noah Luca, Noah Luca. He's like, why are you using my whole name? I'm like, I'm actually prophesying. (laughs) I'm prophesying from before you were even a thing. And I've also had a vision only one time in my life. I don't know if you've ever had a vision where you were just speaking about that and that's different and these are all in the prophecy family right but I was awake and I was in a prayer meeting and I had a vision I was about 19 years old and I saw someone come towards me who now I can tell you was my husband Mm. and in the dream he's coming towards me and he's doing this he's doing bodybuilding I'm like oh (laughs) okay I don't know if this is the Lord (laughs) and he's coming towards me and I just hear the Lord saying this vision he's coming to get you to take you to do bodybuilding well, I write down, what? Matt Redmond appeared to me in a vision. He's going to take me to do bodybuilding. You know, I didn't even know him at that time. Later on, I end up in his band. He says, wow. there's a job going. We'd like to interview you. He says, we would like you to lead our discipleship training course called Bodybuilders. Wow. This was Ooh. years Stop. later. Wow. Now, if I'd have gone around like Joseph saying, oh my gosh, I have this vision, <laughs> Matt Redman, Bodybuilder. I mean, I would have yeah. sounded, he right. would have never spoken yes. to me. Right. Yes. He would have been like, but no. just held it in my heart. And I ended up leading this discipleship program called Bodybuilders. God blew my mind. Prophecy oh, ends wow. up exalting, magnifying, glorifying glorifying Jesus and I was so grateful in both cases it was confirmation encouragement comfort yeah that's so good good. you know I love that Joseph didn't get free till he actually interpreted somebody else's dream yes Mm. you know and he declared the faithfulness of God when he had yet to see it yes and I think that's something that for all of us like if we really believe that there's a promise on the other side we can actually declare him promiser to other people. I know for me, I had a very vivid, I would almost say a night vision. It was a dream. I was large, pregnant with my fourth child, uh, just surviving, just you know, wanting all my children to go to bed and be quiet. My husband is traveling and speaking and I'm editing his book from 10 o'clock at night till 2 a.m. in the morning called The Bait of Satan. And I'm staying up typing. You know, I'm just need my kids to go to bed so I can edit a book and get it out. And I go to sleep exhausted 
and I find myself awake, standing in front of a platform of stone with a lioness laying on her side, and mm. behind it was just this magnificent colors. I don't even know how to describe all of them. On the front of the platform was the word numbers, and then the Roman numerals XX3. And I'm looking at this magnificent lioness, and even though she hadn't moved, I realized that she was more alive than me. And as I looked at her, I felt like something inside of me enlarged. And when I felt like I couldn't take any more in, I heard a voice say, with the birth of this son, you will awaken a lioness. And Mm. everybody had said I was having a girl. We hadn't had a sonogram yet. And I came fully awake, immersed in the presence of God, reached over, picked up my Bible, opened it up to Numbers 23 and verse 24. It says, these people rise like a lioness. They rouse themselves Mm. like a lion. And I'm like, what in the world? But that's what happened. There was a fierce awakening in my life. That's right. When I gave birth to Arden, his name Arden Christopher means fiery, determined, anointed one. And I've just watched how God's faithfulness, when he woke me up, it gave me the power to actually share that and see other women have a fierce wake up. And so I believe that whenever God gives us a dream, just like when he gives us a word, it's always to serve and build up others, yeah. not just to so build good. up ourselves. Yeah. So, good. So, good. so good. And it prepares you. You know, when you talk about dreams with pregnancy and even the lioness, it reminds me of a particular dream that I had when God was showing me a daughter I have not had yet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and he was talking to me about ministry and it was that she would not be in ministry, but she would be in ministry in a different way. And he showed me how she would be someone who would um, be captivated by journalism, but journalism in like war-torn countries. I said, oh my gosh, no. No, thank you. New <laughs> I dream, said, why? Please. Yeah. Wow. And then he tells me her name. Her name would be Ariel. Oh, and you know she that means to, lioness. Yes, Lion of God. Yes. And I said, of course that's her name. <laughs> it would need to be that. Because she would need to be yes. a lion. She would need to be fierce mm-hmm. for what he's already revealing to me about her. And in that dream, I hold on to that so much because when that time comes, that has to anchor me. Because yes. I don't think any mother yes. would be so quick to say, Go ahead. Right. Just go, ahead. go to that war time country. Right. Yes. I would pray that yes. you choose a different That's career. Right. That's right. <laughs> you know, That's so right. even through that, God mm-hmm. starts to prepare you for things that would be hard yeses in mm-hmm. your future. I love that. We were talking earlier, too, about how sometimes we'll say something and we don't even realize what we're saying. And then in hindsight, the Lord's going, hey, remember what you said yeah. recently, the last like six months or so, I feel like the Lord has been saying, hey, this is the path for my son Conley, my middle son. Mm-hmm. This is the school he's supposed to go to with his brother and so on. And it's been kind of like uh, a lot of different decisions because he's got some challenges and developmental things. And so we really felt like we we're on the right path. And I mean, I was believing God, like speaking it over him. And it's not about this school is a thing, but it was more symbolic of that he's doing well versus having to go a different route and that type of thing. And I feel like the Lord affirmed it and affirmed and affirmed it. And so what I had said through the whole last four months, I just kept saying out loud, whatever decision they come back with, I'm going to trust. Whatever decision, they, because we've given all the information, we've covered all the bases, everybody's on the same page with all the reports and assessments and all the things, whatever they come back with. And I got the call. They don't feel like he's ready. And it was like everything in me, like I, I got lioness in me. I'm like, everything in me is like, okay. Like, like everything in me wanting to fight and advocate for him and be like, look at the reports. And we're like, Lord, I thought you said, and all of that. And I felt like the Lord's bringing up, remember what you said. Mm-hmm. You said you're going to trust. Yeah. Whatever you said, you're going to trust whatever decision they That's come back good. with is the right decision for this That's year. Right. It's not forever, but for this year. But it was very hard because I felt like I'm being obedient, following the path, all the signs are pointing this direction, and then God will take you on a turn that you didn't see coming, or it doesn't play out like you thought. And for me, I felt like the Lord brought me back to words I had said. Just kept saying out loud, I'm going to trust what they come back with. I'm going to trust what they come back with. And now the Lord goes, hey, you need to trust what they come back with. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes we will say things that we don't realize what we're saying at the time, and he'll bring it back to us. Even if we don't recognize it afterwards, he'll go, remember what you said. Remember what you said. It's dreams that are in our hearts that we are born with because I believe each of us has purpose and there is a dream that comes alive when we are sensing or we are in prayer or maybe we're in a moment of need and something comes alive. Well, it's not supposed to be like this. Well, that's because there is this God dream in us. And that is that creative miracle. I mentioned that 
prophet spoke to me about a regenerative miracle. Well, for your boy, there's a creative future that's coming out of your heart, a God dream for him. And as Stephanie was talking, and I just admire her so much because she's one of these naturally spiritual people. Yes. I just not love awkward, everything about her. Thank you. <laughs> you know, I mean, gorgeous, smart, all that stuff. And then she has this amazing spirit. Well, the good news is that if you don't think you are that spiritual person, in life, God is using circumstances like with your son, like with your son, like mm -hmm. with my son, all of our families and children. Like he uses, <laughs> yeah. like yours, he uses these circumstances to help us see this God dream. And you were talking earlier about the idea of going to sleep and there's 20 years or plus. And I've come to realize that that is the magic time in my life. Today, this very morning, I went to bed with a problem, an issue. I like to call it an opportunity. I didn't know what to do. And I've learned that as you go to sleep and you close your eyes, that's God's way of putting a period on yesterday's problem, yesterday's situation. For me, sometimes I need to forgive someone, the word release someone, or I need to let go of my heartbreak. And with that, I've come to realize that sleep is the answer because even this morning I woke up and the answer was there. I call wow. that a dream. Mm -hmm. God answers with a dream right, of a yeah. solution. Every yeah. day he allows that. Yeah. I think too, one of the things we've talked a lot about kids, like I think there's something too with our dreams for our kids and our dreams in our hearts and the visions we have for them. And I think for me, one of the things I've struggled with as a mom is I have a picture in my mind of what it's gonna be like. And then either circumstances don't turn out like I think it's going to be like or that align with the dream. And I think there's something um, really difficult but really powerful in letting go of the picture. So like Carter and Conley are 18 months apart. We had them super close together. We wanted them to be best friends, go to school together. And so now this is more than just, it's not about the school, right? Yeah, like it's not about the school at all. It's yeah. about the picture I have right. of my boys being best friends and going and into the lunchroom. Together. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so it's trusting going, okay, God, your picture is always better than my picture. Your plans are always better than my plans. Your ideas, your ways are always better. And so for us to, even when things are moving in a direction or someone gives you a word in a different direction or things, you know, you're praying life over them and then maybe the timing isn't what you wanted or hoped, but to go, okay, God, I can trust you with your picture, even though I can't see it. And maybe it's not what I had in my hand, head, but I tend to hold on to the picture I had, you yeah, know, in my head well. of things, which is hard. Yeah, yeah. because even when I talk about like what God showed me about the daughter that I will have, I always envision that, you know, I'll train this little girl sure, into yeah. ministry and she'll oh, be yeah. preaching machine. And then that just, you know, took that away. Sure. <laughs> He's like, I'm going to tell you in advance, your picture's wrong. Yeah, that's, I'm going to give you a head That's not it at all. <laughs> you know, but it's to realize, and I think all of these things bring us back to the truth, right, that we are only stewards that we don't own anything. You know, you don't That's own so your children. Yep, you you don't, don't own That's right. even the blessings of God, the promises of God. None of it is yours to own, That's right. right? We are only called as stewards That's over right. that. And so when we even live in that place of stewardship, then it's easier to receive instruction from the Lord. It's easier even when you wake up and there's a solution in your heart because you recognize that I'm only managing what comes from God. Yeah. Right. And so you have a trust that even if I went to sleep with this issue, Lord, as I awaken, you know, I love when you talk about waking up with that solution in your heart, because mm -hmm. it reminds me about when the scripture says that his mercies are made new every morning, That's right. That's you right. know, that it just brings us back to that. I love that we're tying that in because the prophetic, again, a lot of times when we think about the prophetic, we want to think about the blessings that God, yes. bless me, give me this, right. you know, enrich my life. And it just comes back to God gives instructions for things because it's all about him. It has yes. nothing to do with us owning anything, but just managing what comes from him. Yeah. Okay. And you know, the Bible even talks about not going to bed with anger. Yes, it does. You know, and you mentioned earlier about the idea that you lay down. Mm -hmm. What I do is I put my hands on my heart and I close my eyes and I say, Lord, I love you. I do my gratitude, I use my fingers and count my blessings. And that brings me to a place of peace. And I've learned that as I go into that slumber, I can trust God, like you talked about, that the answer will come. 
And so I'd like to pray with all of us. I'd like you to agree with me that there are those that are listening right now that are really at desperate moment and yet there is a solution as we go to sleep yes, tonight yes, we can yes, trust him yes, so, so father we lift up our friends who are watching right now and even in this circle we agree together that the answer is on the way that revelation is coming into our lives what's revelation a new idea and thank you god that we start over every morning brand new. So Lord, we say yes to what you're bringing to us even tonight and all day long in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.